The new Mercedes A-Class, it's nothing like the old Mercedes A-Class, is it? Thank God. Gone is the quirky mini MPV styling, and in its place, we've got something that looks like a proper premium small hatchback. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most premium looking small hatchback, but don't take my word for it. Why don't you have a look around it while we play some music? Do you know what? I think that's the longest I've gone in any car buy review without saying something. But then this car does pretty much speak for itself. And I do mean that quite literally because it comes with voice operated commands. Please repeat. I said it come with voice operated commands. Now, can you be quiet while I get on with the rest of this review? Anyway, that brings us on to equipment and all A-classes come with this rather nice tablet style display. Now, unlike a normal tablet, it's not touchscreen, which is a bit of a shame. However, you do control it using this swivel wheel and it's fairly easy to use. The system also includes Bluetooth for your mobile phone and USB connectivity. For an extra £400, you can add full iPhone connectivity. And when I say full, I really do mean full. Because with that system, what you've got is the most connected car that you can buy. You can download a special Mercedes app from the iTunes store and it allows you to control some of your phone's features through the car. Though for safety reasons, it limits what you can do while you're driving. The program also includes internet radio and sat nav with Europe wide mapping. This means you don't have to spend £2,100 on the Mercedes command navigation system. My favourite thing about the app is that it allows you to keep abreast of what's happening in the social network. So I've got my Twitter account connected to the car now and I can look at some of the tweets from the people I'm following. And it'll even read out their tweets for me if I want it to. Now if I get bored of Twitter, which is easily done actually, you can go into Facebook and earlier on, just before I started this review, I took a picture of myself with this car and posted it on my Facebook page. And look, we can check that out now. There we go, me and the A-Class, very nice. And along with the picture, I asked people to give me their comments on what they think of this new A-Class. And well, we'll come back to that later in the review and see what they said about this car. The A-Class may be Mercedes' smallest car, but it's still packed full of lots of safety equipment. For instance, the seven airbags in here, you've got ESP anti-skid control to prevent an accident in the first place, and Mercedes attention assist, which can spot if you're starting to nod off behind the wheel and will warn you. And I've inadvertently triggered it before in a different Mercedes, not this one, so I can vouch that it works. All A-classes come with something called Collision Prevention Assist. Now you're probably wondering how the heck that works, so let me explain. The car is fitted with a forward-facing radar and it can tell if you're getting too close to the car in front. And if you are, you'll get this warning sign in your speedometer. Now if you do nothing about it and don't react and your closing speed increases, then you'll get this audible warning. Obviously at that point you stamp on the brakes, but often what happens is people don't press the brake pedal as hard as they can. And the system knows this, and so it gives you full braking performance when your foot goes on the pedal to make sure that you minimize your impact. In fact, it can even prevent the accident entirely. You can get even more safety systems on the options list, like speed limit warning, blind spot warning and lane departure control, which will steer you back on track if you start to weave out of your lane. All this makes the A-Class a reassuring car to drive. In fact, the car makes you feel so safe that there's no need to panic if your annoying camera person insists that you show off the car's useful cubby spaces while you're driving along. Okay, so that's the cubby bit dealt with great, but you're probably more interested in what this car feels like to drive. Well, the first thing I noticed is that the driving position 
is spot on. In some Mercedes cars, the steering wheel is a bit off center, makes it feel a bit twisted behind the wheel, but this one, it's perfect, it's dead central. Also, it gets an electronic parking brake, so there's no foot-operated parking brake clogging up the footwell. But the overwhelming sensation you get is that it feels very sporty. For starters, you sit nice and low, and also, the way it's been set up, it goes around corners very, very well. So then, what about the engines? Well, the good news is, they're all pretty impressive, actually. You can get a diesel, which will return 74 miles per gallon, and it emits under 100 grams per kilometer of carbon dioxide, so it's free from road tax. In fact, it's the first Mercedes that emits under 100 grams per kilometer. This car, though, it's the A250 AMG Sport, and it has a two liter turbo petrol engine, which is good for naught to 60 in under seven seconds. However, that brings me on to this car's downsides because the AMG Sport versions feature lowered stiffened suspension, and the ride on them is just so jarring that there's no way any improvement in handling is worth the trade-off in comfort. And anyway, this car isn't as much fun to drive as a rear-wheel drive BMW 1 Series, especially as the steering, which well, is not as sharp as the BMWs. And I'd also avoid the seven-speed automatic gearbox because it can be a little bit slow to respond at times and it's not as good as the automatic gearbox you get in the Audi A3. Sorry Mercedes, but it's just not. I'm also sorry to tell you that a Volvo V40 provides slightly superior accommodation for rear passengers. The first thing you notice when getting into the back is that this wheel arch does make it a little bit more tricky to clamber aboard, but when you're in place you actually think that, well, knee room's good, so too is headroom, but then you notice that this kind of arching window line makes it feel just a little bit dark and dingy and claustrophobic in here, even with the panoramic sunroof. And if you look at the back, you'll see that the rear window is really small, which means that rearward visibility is pretty bad, although obviously that's more of a problem for the driver. They'll have another issue with the A-Class if they're a keen golfer, because the boot's narrow opening makes it hard to fit wide items in. Even expert luggage packers will struggle to squeeze in a full set of clubs in the boot without folding down the rear seats. And whatever you do, don't drop anything in the footwell, because then you'll notice the quality of the materials used lower down in the cabin aren't very Mercedes, especially the plasticky switches, which feel like they've come out of a Christmas cracker. Finally, Remember that brilliant mobile app I showed you at the beginning of the video? Well, it's not available for Android phones, only Apple ones. Speaking of which, let's log back onto Facebook to see if anyone responded to my message. There's been 193 likes and 114 comments, so it shows this car is raising quite a bit of interest. And let's see what some of these people have said. Well, Shane Pegas says, whoa, looks sexy. I think he's talking about the car, not me in that picture. Anyway, let's try somebody else. So, let's have a look who we got. Let's try Zane Khan. Now, Zane says, it's a thousand times better than the previous A-Class. However, he goes on to say that overall he thinks the BMW 1 Series would be better, although, to be fair, he does have a BMW M5 as his avatar. Let's try someone else then, maybe someone a bit more impartial. So let's have a scan down and see what we can find. Right, so we've got Jacob Kirkerson, and let's have a look what he says. It is unique and better looking than the BMW 1 Series. That's good, let's try someone else. Okay, Doogie Campbell. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna read that out, it's just, it's just rude and it's not really about the car, it's about me anyway. So let's just try one more, one last person. Felix Wisner, let's see what he has to say. Felix says, awesome vehicle. And on that note, I think we'll end this review.